thanks for watching another episode of Builds by Bailey. Today we're going to do things a little bit different. I've got a set of knuckles for a GS300 that we're going to chop, cut, and rebuild. So follow along today while we chop these things up and re-weld them into place. Here I have a set of GS300 knuckles. These are front knuckles. So you can see they've got the hubs on them and the dust shields and all that stuff. One of these you can see that I've already marked, the other one isn't yet. So I'm going to walk you through the steps on marking these. So as you can see, I've already marked this one up. Um, and you may wonder why uh, when cutting these you don't cut them at the top. Well at the top there's not really a lot of meat um, to cut, to weld so it's strong. So that's one thing. The other thing is um, you want this to be as parallel to, or perpendicular I should say, um, to this area as possible. So if you chop this out here, it's actually going to bring the uh, mounting point of your wheel forward and you'll actually get positive camber out of it and we do not want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down and find uh, where it curves back into it. We're going to find the flattest spot possible and as you can see I've marked a good parallel line um, to go right through the middle of that fat section there. So this parallel line, we're gonna, I found where that's at. We're going to use these as reference points after we've chopped it to line everything back up. I've also put a center line on the front of it. So we're going to mark uh, 35 millimeters out of this. This just happens to be right at the 4 inch mark. Yeah, I know I'm using standard and metric. It'll be okay. It's right around 101 to 102 millimeters down. So uh, 4 inches from here to here and then 35 millimeters apart. And we're going to chop this section with the X's. We're going to chop that completely out then this should sit right down in place. And we'll use this marker here to line up with this line. And then this center line will keep this from left to right. So I've made myself a pretty random apparatus to be able to mark a straight line on this and make sure that I get everything perpendicular and parallel and all that kind of random stuff. So I've taken a piece of angle iron and I've mounted that with that C-clamp onto the uh, knuckle itself, onto the upper arm. I've measured off of the angle iron there uh, to specific points on the vise to make sure that I've got it exactly parallel to the vise. And then I've drawn a perfectly straight line off of the angle iron um, using reference points onto the upper arm there. So you can see that nice silver line right there on top. So I've got that uh, as straight as I can possibly get it. So now we're going to measure down 4 inches or 101 or 102 millimeters um, down to a reference point on the arm and we'll put a tick in the front and in the back. Uh, also trying to keep this as straight as possible and then we'll measure down 35 millimeters from that line and put another mark. Now we have all of the lines made, we're going to go ahead and start cutting it with our angle grinder or cut off wheel. Make sure you wear your safety glasses and earring protection if you have it. This crap is loud. Now that I have the two pieces cut, um, I have gone back over the lines and I have uh, made them nice and dark because the next step will be to bevel um, all the edges on this. So I've gone over and you can see that these two lines match up here. So I've also, on the side, made sure that those two lines match up on that side as well. So we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna bevel them really well 
um, so that way we can mount them together and then this will keep us nice and true straight up and down the way that it needs to be as you can see I've put the really deep bevel on both sides so I can create a nice valley for the new uh, weld to go down in there so I get maximum contact uh, with my weld you can also see that I've tack welded it in place and you can see that my line is there um, holding its you know, form like it's supposed to. So I've got the line there. And I've also got the line on the other side um, all lined up where it needs to be. Uh, I tried to rig it up with clamps and things like that and it just didn't work well for me. So I found the best way to do that is to tack it in place and then we're going to use the torch and heat the metal up until um, it's really hot as hot as I physically can get it and then we're going to weld it in place. Since this is a cast metal uh, you have to preheat the metal that you're going to do plus that stuff's like an inch thick on one side so we want to get it as hot as we can get it um, so the weld penetrates as best as it can. So as you can see, I tried to keep the line as straight as I could get it. Um, like I said, the other one on the other side is as straight as I can get it as well. So we've done everything we can to shorten this by 35 millimeters, which is what the customer asked. And we also were able to keep the angle of the top um, the way it's supposed to be. So that way we didn't add unnecessary positive camber to this by cutting it at the top. Now I'm fairly confident that that's all I'm going to need to do to these. Uh, I don't think that I need to add any extra bracing or anything like that on there even though you pretty much could do that if you wanted to if you thought that the weld wasn't going to be strong enough. Um, I had the heat on my welder turned up as high as it would possibly go and the wire speed down as slow as I could go with it being smooth so that way I'd get as much heat uh, into the metal as I possibly could. So. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty pretty confident in it. It took three good passes to go over the quarter of an inch-ish uh, depth uh, ridge that I had cut all the way around it. So three even passes all the way around and I tried to get that, like I said, as molten hot as I could so it would burn in. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm pretty confident in that so I don't need any extra bracing. Um, you can grind that down if you wanted to and make it look as pretty as you want to. This is going to be underneath the car. No one's ever going to see it, so uh, I'll let the customer decide if they want to grind it down or not and go from there. So with that being said, uh, this is the end of this episode of Builds by Bailey. Uh, once again, I want to thank you guys for stopping by. Uh, my subscriber count is almost there. So if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button right down there in the bottom of the screen and uh, hit that bell notification so every time I post a new video you guys can come watch it. I've got a lot of stuff happening or coming soon happening on that Corolla back there in the background. If this is one of the first videos you've ever watched, I uh, have a lot of stuff on that car. So uh, feel free to look over the channel, watch as many videos as you want. Um, hit that subscribe button, hit all the thumbs up you can. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends.